Hi everybody, it's Franny, and today we have Miss Lemon Drop, the 1969 Beetle, back in the garage, this time for shock absorbers. The shocks we're going to be installing today are the original OEM Bogey shocks by Saks. And on the left, we've got the front shocks. In the middle here, we've got the rear shocks. And on the right is a, an assembly kit of all the rubber parts that go with the front shocks in order to get them installed. They're rubber bumpers and bushings and all sorts of stuff. So we're going to pull all that together. We're going to pop the old ones out and put the new ones in. Should be pretty straightforward. We'll start by removing the old shock. Now this is sort of a uh, newer version here. It doesn't have quite all the gobbins that goes in on the, on the OEM shocks up here at the top. It's pretty simple. There's a little flat bit up on the top of this that we can use. You can probably just really throw a, like a pair of vice grips or something on, or it's actually six millimeters. So I have a six millimeter socket I, or wrench I can use. And then the uh, bolt here is actually a 14. So all we're going to do is just loosen this guy up and you see it'll turn a little bit if I don't, if I don't hold it. So we'll hold it with our six and loosen this guy up. There we go. All right, we've got a, a metal cap and then a rubber bushing on top of that. Work that off. Okay. The bottom bolt down here is a 17 millimeter. Go ahead and pull that one off. It's not particularly tight. Now our shock is almost all the way out and it's been a bit of a bear and I'm afraid if I hit it good and hard, it's gonna go flying, the whole shock's gonna go flying off. So I'm gonna take my metal end cap and my nut and hand tight, just sort of put them up on the top there just to hold the shock in so it doesn't go crazy. Okay, so we just put this back on just, just that much. That's enough. All right, and let's hit this again. There we go. Okay, we can take the old one out. There we go. This shock wasn't in there that long. This car hasn't been rebuilt all that long ago. So it's already starting to rust in there. When I put the new one on, I'm gonna put a little bit of Never Seize in there just to keep these sort of bits from rusting and being such a bear to get off. So we finally got our shock off. We're going to assemble the new one and put it all back together here. Before we can install our new shock, we're going to assemble all this hardware here that goes on top of the shock. So this is the order in which it goes in, this big rubber guy here. Then there's a, a big metal uh, uh, shaft here that, that screws on the end of the shock and then one rubber bushing, then the car, then another rubber bushing, our familiar end cap, and a nut. Now, a couple of things about this. I was, I was looking at this assembly order and things and looking at the shock itself. There's a little flat spot, I don't know if you can see this right here, that you can throw a 10 millimeter wrench on right there. So you can lock this thing because it obviously turns just fine. So we don't want that. And we need to get this guy screwed on to the top of this thing. Now, the only other problem is there's nothing really to hold this. I mean, they give you this sort of crappily pressed kind of, uh, I don't know what, they, what you'd call this thing, kind of crappily pressed sort of uh, hex in here that's off-centered and it's kind of a mess and I don't know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and use a pair of channel locks to hold on to this guy here when I tighten it down. And then for a little added measure, I'm also gonna use uh, some blue Loctite as well. So, don't wanna to forget to put the rubber guy on first. You have to take it all back off again. Now normally, this little lip here goes inside this rubber guy. So you can push this guy in and it'll sit up into this sort of cavity here, which is great. 
but when we install the shock, we're still going to need this flat spot exposed so we can tighten the nut that goes on the top of here on top of the car without the shaft still spinning. So we're just going to place this on for now, just like that. We'll add a little bit of blue Loctite to our threads just for good measure. Thinking it's probably bad if this unscrews. All right, so we'll screw it on like that, simple enough. Okay. I'm just going to tighten this guy down. There we go. And I think that's good for that. Then this little rubber guy goes on the top. Now there's a, a little lip around the top and not a lip on the bottom. So the smooth side goes down here and then the exact opposite when we push it up into the car and clamp on to the top of the shock tower there, we're gonna, we're gonna clamp on like that. So great. And then on top of that goes this guy and then this guy on the top of that. So simple enough, right? Okay. Now, since this is a, a true shock, there's no, there's no spring in here, so we can collapse this all we want. And you know, as I'm thinking about this, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach it at the bottom first. I think that's gonna make my life easier because if we have to rotate this thing on to the bottom pin, uh, it's going to have to move through a bit of an arc and it's going to be a little bit difficult to get on. I'll bet we can get this thing on a lot easier if we just uh, put it on the bottom pin first and then do the top one. Okay, so we're all set here. Let's go ahead and get back to the car and get it installed. Now looking at this lower stud down here, it's kind of dirty. It's a little bit grungy, so I'm going to hit it with a brass brush really quick. Just sort of clean it up a little bit. We're going to put a dab of Never Seize on it and then go ahead and slide our shock on. Okay. Clean, just a little dab. Never, never sees. Just a little bit. I have my shock collapsed all the way, so it'll make it a lot easier to get on. Just so we just feed it in through here. Suppose it doesn't matter. Slide that guy on. Easy enough. Remember, we have our little floppy washer that needs to go on, so there should be a lock washer and a regular nut. Probably just a touch of blue Loctite's a great idea as well. There we go. And looking at this bolt, I can tell it's kind of a old style lock bolt where they sort of pinned in on the flat edges a little bit because I can kind of feel it. So it should go on a little stiff. There we go. All right, tighten this up. Don't go crazy. I couldn't find a torque spec on this, but I'm feeling probably, it's a big bolt, 17 millimeter. You could probably put a good solid 40 foot pounds or so on it, something like that. Remove our hardware and into place. Throw our rubber guy on the top there. Since there's no lock washer on top of this, I'm gonna go ahead and throw a little Loctite on it as well, just a tad. Without our little rubber booty in place, we can get, still get to this notch. So we'll use our 10 millimeter hold it and tighten it up with our 17. There we go. All right, nice and tight. Our last step is just gonna to be to push our rubber booty back up. There it goes. And that's it. So all we have to do is just put the wheel back on and lower the car back down and we're all done. For the rear shock, it's a little more straightforward, but we're gonna start the same way. We're gonna jack up the car and go ahead and take this wheel off so we've got good access.
we'll start with the top of the shock here and see what we need to do here. I assume it's gonna to start to spin on the other side. There it goes. This guy in. Oh, we didn't need it much at all. Okay. All right. And just pull our bolt through. And once again, the bolt is kind of dry, so I'm going to clean it up a bit and put a little Never Seize on it because I hate these things carbon bonding themselves together. Down at the bottom of the shock, it's a 19 millimeter on both sides. There we go. All right, we got a lock washer and a nut. Holy cow, that was tight. So there's a lock washer and then the big nut and the nut was 19 millimeters. So we just pull our stud through, grab hold of our shock, of course, pull that through and that's pretty much it. There we go, it's out. So this one says it's a bogey. It still feels fine. Just looks a bit old. Oh well, no matter, we have a new one. Like with our front bolts, I'm just going to clean them a little bit so they go in a little bit easier. In this case, I'm gonna mount the bottom first as well. The, uh, this, this piece that goes through here is a little bit tight down in the bottom carrier. So I think I can work it in easier if the top is free. And once I've got the bolt in all the way across, I'll go ahead and work the bolt in for the top as well. Okay, there we go. Just a teeny bit of never sleaze here. And just a teeny touch of Loctite. I know there's already a lock washer on there, but just the teeniest bit will just make me feel a little bit better, I think. We'll leave that hand tight for the moment and place our top mount here. Just pull this guy up, simple enough. Get it lined up. All right, fabulous. Teeniest bit here. Okay, great. And once again, just a touch Loctite in here. We don't want this coming loose. Okay. Our shock looks good. All that remains is just to tighten down the bolts. There we go. All that's left is just to put our wheel back on and lower the car. Well, that's the shocks on the left side. The right side is just like the left side, so I won't bore you with that. Thank you so much for watching. Hope it was helpful. Till next time, safe travels. Bye.